we're going to do is talk about a few strategies for handling this in a more automated way. And the first one is dynamic mode. And so dynamic is a very interesting technique. I think in FME, it lets you really automate the schema. And in fact, as Dale said, if, if you don't care and you just want to blast away tables and put whatever data coming into your workflow, you want that schema, you can use that on the writer side. So it's very flexible and um, actually it creates a really nice maintenance strategy for yourself because you can handle things after the fact. So this is an example of a simple dynamic workflow. And what I want to do just very quickly is show you the data coming in. I've changed it slightly from Dale's. So we'll do this. The first work our first CSV file I'm using has underscores and the names. I'm using lowercase here uh, just to change it up a little bit. Uh, but in fact, all of the data is the same uh, business owner tables as Dale was using there. So I'm using one of those and I have a second table here that has no underscores in the names. So that's the schema drift that we're going to be working with today. So we'll go away from that. And so what I can do is I have a workflow here that can handle both of those files at any time. And it won't make me cry or have to phone my DBA or, or have to deal with um, a lot of schema shift stress. So let's see how this works. There's two factors. There's on the reading side, we have our CSV reader. And the magic button here really is this checkbox saying merge feature types. And what this does is it allows any CSV file, you can use an Excel or some different format, but as a CSV file, you can route it through and we don't actually care about the schema. It will accept anything. And on the writer side, the other little piece of secret business is to turn off or sorry, turn on dynamic schema definition, which is another checkbox here. And so when you do this, the one thing to think about with all dynamic workspaces is really where are you going to get your schema from? Because what's happening is when you run FME, you are telling the writer to go get the schema from somewhere right at runtime. And that's the schema you're going to use. Unlike what Dale did in the uh, a little bit earlier there where he was defining it on both sides. I don't have to worry about any of that here. It's going to happen all at runtime, not design time. So the setting I'm checking on is just what is my source? Well, in this case, I want to create a mirror image of whatever's coming in to my workspace. So that's what I'm telling it to do. Basically, go to the reader, grab the schema, use that to write the data out. And so we can run this. Here we go. And we'll look at the output first. that a second to load and use this handy little viewer to see what's in our table. So I believe in this one we should have, is it underscores or no underscores? We have no underscores happening. Very good. But if I start to get a different schema coming in from my source and we can mock that up by picking a different file. Let's get our underscores file that. Now completely different CSV files coming in. And when we view this, we've written out that data and that schema. There we go. So once this pops up, we should see underscores and all of our data is there and everything is happy. Um, and I should mention that what setting I'm using here, similar to Dale again earlier, is I'm dropping the table every time I'm writing this data in. So that way I can totally recreate the schema every single time. That's it. That's really effective. It's a dynamic workflow that really simplifies the schema management. Um, and then you could continue to use this again and again as you go. So I'll set back. That's our dynamic side. So again, you've got this flexibility and ease of maintenance, which in my mind is actually really, really powerful. And now we're going to talk about our design strategy too. And this is a good one. This 
technique, in my mind, really lets you handle schema changes on the source or the destination. It can do both for you. And that's because you're going to define the schema externally to FME. And that could be, you know, someone from a different team who's managing the databases. That could be somebody who knows the data really well, but doesn't use FME. It's a really powerful way to externalize this and create a strategy for yourself um, that lets you manage this very, very easily. So again, I, I really like this for enabling these non-FME users to help you. Again, we've got a great tutorial. It covers many different aspects of this transformer. You can get really deep into this. Um, I kind of picture someone with a big long beard, scraggly beard and lots of hair, or, or Tom Hanks, I guess, from Castaway after they've left this tutorial. Um, but that is because this transformer is uber, uber powerful. So I'm going to go back to FME. There we go. And we're going to open up second workspace here. So in this case, we're just going to talk about the schema mapper. We're not going to talk about dynamic mode, but I will show you an example of both of those together in a minute. So what do we have here? Well, we have a table coming in. Let's take a look at that. And it has no underscores in it. We have a schema mapper, which we're going to use to change the attribute names to include a scheme or, or sorry, an underscore. So we're going to change the actual schema and then we're going to write it out. And in this case, I should show you that I'm just truncating the existing table because the schema is already set to include those underscores. So what the schema mapping is doing is it's enabling me not to have those errors that Dale had in the morning because my schema exists and I just have to manipulate the data to fit it. And in fact, I just want to talk about the schema mapper quickly. I like to think of it as a bit of a mix of a database joiner. Um, if you take a database joiner and you add an attribute manager to it, draw one of those on the canvas and then you add oh just a little soup song of a test filter you get effectively what is the schema mapper so you're joining quite a number of different transformers together to create this and I almost I almost want to make a petition you know in FME if you bring a custom transformer down you get a, this green style custom transformer or look to it You'll notice blue everywhere else. You'll get something like that. But what I want to do, let's get a schema mapper on the on the canvas here, is Dale, I don't know how you feel about this, but I'm thinking of a petition to do this. So we get a custom transformer here and we rename this guy to the Hulk. And this is how it might look on the canvas because I think it is just that powerful. We've got our Hulk there. Just make it mad. Yeah, you don't want to make it mad. That is correct. I don't know what it would do to your schema in those cases. But uh, so that's my Hulk. I'm going to use the Bruce Banner version right now. He's not super mad um, for this example, but you may see some changes in the future if I get my way. But let's run this. Here we go. And I've made a bit of a mess of my canvas, but we'll move those guys up there. And so what we get is the schema mapper, which is going out to a CSV file. I'll show you what the CSV file looks like. I've got it open here. And in here, I'm just defining what does my source look like and what does my destination, what do I want it to look like? And so you can imagine in both cases, this helps you manage schema because you're defining what these two pieces of information look like or you want them to look like. You can ignore this bit on the right. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. So this is our schema table and how it works is you connect to it in here and then you tell it what do I want to use those columns for or that information. In fact, you can do all kinds of different things like creating new attributes or changing the feature type name itself. Um, but in this case, we're saying any features coming in with the attribute name first name change that attribute name to an underscored first name. So you just define that. So it's pretty simple in this example. 
um, but, but extremely, extremely powerful. And so what you'll see is in here, I'm now missing these because I've modified those. Those are from the original schema. But if I click on this and look in the feature information window, you'll see that our data actually does exist. So it's there. And then when you write it out, it will put the data into the table in the correct way. And we can see that here. There we go. Again, a really good example, a good technique for just handling this in a more automated fashion and external to FME as well. So there it is. So we're happy. We've got our data in the database. Life is looking good. Um, but I want to show another example, third example of how you could do this in a more dynamic way. Because what's happened in this first example here is I've relied upon someone else to ensure that my database is schemaed correctly. I don't know if that's the right term, but <laughs> is designed in the right way and, and exists. But in this scenario here, I could actually drop the table and create it completely brand new. And in fact, I can create it using a schema that's completely external to FME. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to run this and then I can explain it a little bit more. Now, on the top, I've got that same merged feature type here. So it's dynamic. Any CSV file can come in. We'll ignore this a little bit for a second. And I'm doing the exact same schema mapper. So the data is coming in. I'm changing those old names to new names and I'm going to write it out. And in the previous example, this was just a truncate because my table was happy, but let's say my table's not happy and I want to blow it away. I can turn this dynamic on and use schema from a schema feature in this case to tell it what the schema should be. So the question becomes like, what is this? What is this schema feature? How do you tell the writer what to use? Well, I have a neat trick to do that. So again, one of those odd transform or, or odd formats in FME that maybe isn't used as much as it could be. This is a schema from table. And if we open this up, you'll remember those three attributes that I kind of didn't mention a minute ago. That's what I'm using here to build one of those fancy schema lists that Dale used a little bit earlier. So I have a table column telling me what I want to call my schema or, or the feature type name. The attributes are all defined. We've got that from before because we're using the schema mapper to map to these. And these data types I've also listed in here. So again, this is just living in this fancy CSV file that I have. And I could easily explain to somebody else what these data types are and have them manage this table for me if they're the owner of these sets of data. So I, I like this because I'm using one file external to FME to really do everything for myself. So what happens coming out of here, we'll just look at it. We get that again, that fancy list with all the schema defined on it. So you get things like here's the IP address with my underscore that I like. And then all I'm doing is I'm taking that list and I'm sticking it on every feature coming through. So each one of these gets its list. The schema mapper changes the actual attributes to match that list. And then the writer writes it out. So if we look at this here, we should get the table completely filled out and happy. And again, if you were to change that CSV file and run this, those changes would get picked up. So it's quite dynamic, quite um, powerful when you're doing this. And there, there's our table and uh, quite pleased with that. So those are two techniques. I will mention that I have a fourth one that we'll put in the upload that makes you not have to do this merging. So for large sets of data, that would be more effective. In that example, I'm just routing the schema feature right to here first, and then all the data comes in um, and it's matched up pretty well. So this I'm like to show you because it sort of makes sense to me. You can see where the schema is going, but uh, we do have some more powerful examples that you can take a look at. Let's just wrap up a little recap. Schema mapper, dynamic, both 
super great techniques for managing this, getting ahead of schema drift, um, and really defining your schemas in an automated way.